Hello, everyone, and welcome to our March pre-camp uh, webinar. Uh, before we get started, I know a lot of you have questions that are pertaining to the new State of Michigan Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, uh, or LARA requirements, and the Patrol Pod system. I want to start out tonight by saying that this is not a change from the Michigan Crossroads Council, 
but rather it's a state mandate that is part of our operating license that we have to comply with. Uh, we're gonna go through our regular agenda tonight first. So I'm gonna ask that all questions pertaining to COVID-19 or the patrol pod system, wait until we get to that portion of the presentation. Uh, my team and I are gonna do our best to answer your questions, uh, but know that we may not be able to address all concerns this evening. If you do not get an answer to your question, please reach out to me directly by email. And I'm gonna ask Corey to type that in the system here so everyone can see it in the chat, um, but that way I can best assist you. I know there's a lot of emails that have come out in the last two weeks. I have not been in the office in the last two weeks. Uh, I came into my office yesterday to 285 emails. So I've been working diligently to get through those uh, and I hope to have everything answered uh, by the end of the day tomorrow that is currently in my inbox. Um, the last thing I wanna say is that the MCC uh, is working diligently uh, and hopes to have detailed information regarding coronavirus out to all members of the council within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're gonna cover details that are specific to Camp Rotary uh, and COVID-19 as part of our April webinar. Um, and then finally, I'm just gonna ask that everyone on this call remember that a scout is courteous and a scout is kind. Uh, so please remain so in the chat. Uh, we know that there's a lot of frustration when it comes to change. Uh, but that's why the scout motto is to be prepared. Uh, so thank you. Uh, and with that, we are going to get started with this month's webinar. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the upcoming third payment. Um, and uh, that payment is going to be due on April 5th. Uh, this payment is strictly for youth. Um, an additional $115 is going to be due on April 5th. If you have not yet registered for summer camp uh, and you do so anytime after today, uh, the amount due is $215 per youth and $50 per uh, full-time adult. Uh, also mark your calendars. The final payment for summer camp is due on May 3rd. That'll be one more payment of $115 per youth, which will total the $330 uh, and $110 per full-time adult, which will total $160. And then your part-time adult fees will also be due at that time, uh, totaling at $33 per day and then finally, any pre-ordered merchandise. So you have the opportunity to pre-order your camp t-shirts. Uh, we are asking you uh, to pre-order those if at all possible so we can make sure that we have enough on hand. Um, anyone that pre-orders a, uh, a camp t-shirt does get a free slushie out of the trading post. Uh, so keep that in mind as well um, as you're talking with your families and preparing for your final payment. After May 3rd, the late fee does kick in for non-crossover scouts and the camp price will go to $345. Moving on, we're gonna talk about CPAP machines. Uh, and the CPAP machines uh, are a, uh, becoming more and more common uh, at summer camp. And the question that we get most of the time is how do we accommodate for CPAP machines in our campsites? Uh, we cover this now so that you have time to plan ahead of your arrival uh, to camp. Uh, CPAP and other electronic requirements, um, everyone needs to know that none of the campsites at Camp Rotary have electricity. So there's no electricity in any of the 11 campsites that we have. Uh, Camp Rotary does not allow uh, you to run extension cords from our shower buildings uh, or other buildings. They become a hazard, uh, trip hazard, fire hazard, uh, vehicle hazard. So we do not allow extension cords to be run uh, from anywhere in camp. If you require electricity, um, you'll need to bring a battery or an AC-DC converter 
uh, or a quiet gas powered generator. Uh, Camp Rotary will not provide gas, uh, but we will provide battery charging service uh, for you for free. Um, the two recommended items that you need are a deep cycle 12 volt battery um, and then an AC DC converter. Uh, there's a ton of these available on Amazon. Uh, over the last couple years, I keep seeing the same ones show up in campsites. Uh, so I've asked those adult leaders uh, uh, what that is, and that recommended one can be seen uh, there on your screen. Uh, I'll give you a moment to screenshot that or write down uh, what that camper recommended uh, converter is so you can find it. And then the, finally, please note that we will not allow vehicles in campsite for electrical use. Uh, Camp Rotary is a small campus, um, and for safety reasons, we do not allow uh, vehicles uh, in camp except for a uh, special circumstance. Uh, so with that, we're going to move into uh, vehicle use in camp. All personal vehicles, which includes the vehicle that you tow your trailer with, uh, are to remain in the camp parking lot, and they are not allowed outside of the parking lot without my approval as the camp director. Um, when your tow vehicle comes into camp, uh, they will uh, be allowed to drop the trailer and then immediately return that vehicle to the parking lot. Um, if you're going to park your car at camp during the week, uh, you will be required to fill out a Camp Rotary parking slip, which you can see a picture of there. Uh, that parking slip was included in the email that went out to you early this morning uh, and is also available on the registration landing page. We ask you to uh, pl pr please print that out um, and display it in the front window of your vehicle so that if there is an issue involving your vehicle, uh, we can get a hold of you promptly uh, to remedy that uh, situation. We do have circumstances where vehicles will be allowed into camp, um, but it's very limited and it's strictly limited to two items. Um, in order for a person to have a vehicle in camp, um, they must either possess a state-issued handicap permit uh, or they must have a doctor's note stating that the person has limited mobility. Uh, if you have one of those two items, uh, then we will issue you a weekly pass uh, for the week. If you are issued that weekly permit, uh, you must adhere to the permit rules. Uh, permits are only for the person that they are issued to. So your vehicle is not used to transport other people uh, without prior approval from uh, myself. Uh, we understand sometimes we have a youth uh, that has uh, some issues. They're on crutches or in a wheelchair. Um, and so obviously we're going to approve you to uh, move and transport that youth through camp uh, as well. Uh, vehicle use permits pertain to all different types of vehicles. That's cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, ATVs, UTVs, golf carts, uh, and the like. Uh, bicycles are the only thing that this does not pertain to, and there's a whole different set of rules pertaining to bicycles. Um, if you're utilizing a vehicle that is other than a standard automobile, uh, you have to adhere to BSA policies. Um, including the use of helmets on uh, ATVs and UTVs. Um, and the BSA now requires training um, for UTV use. So uh, if you're going to uh, look at bringing a UTV to camp, uh, please uh, reach out to me via email so that we can discuss that further. Um, there is a pertinent question in the chat from Joel asking if you can drive your car or truck back to drop gear off. And the answer is no. Um, camp has a set of baggage wagons that will be assigned to your unit uh, in the parking lot. 
um, that we will move your gear back to the campsite uh, for you. Um, so anything that is not in your unit trailer will be unloaded into one of our baggage wagons and then uh, our camp staff will transport that into camp uh, for you. Moving on, um, we do still have some summer camp staffing needs. Uh, summer camp staff seems to fluctuate on a daily basis uh, with uh, positions opening and then other positions being filled and then other positions reopening. Um, so currently on your screen uh, is everything that pertains to our current camp staffing needs. Um, for our uh, uh, direct uh, uh, director roles. We have our health officer, our aquatics director, and our industrial arts director positions open. Uh, staff qualifications, uh, be a member of the BSA or be able and willing to attain BSA membership. So if you've never been in the Boy Scouts of America, but you want to work camp staff, uh, we will gladly interview you. And if we think you'll be a good fit, we will hire you, um, but you will have to register uh, to be a member of the BSA. Um, you have to be able to purchase your required uniforms, meet the minimum age requirements um, for the job positions, uh, be available for all of the dates of camp operation. This year it's June 5th through August 3rd. Be able to live on site uh, or in close proximity to camp uh, and be able to attend pos uh, position specific training uh, off site as applicable. Uh, other positions that we have open, um, cooks uh, 18 or older, food service staff 15 or older, uh, custodians uh, 18 plus, camp clerk uh, 16, shotgun instructor 18 plus, first year camper instructor 16 plus, and handicraft instructor 16 plus. Uh, staff will have a uh, weekly salary that they are paid every other week. Uh, we also pay for all of their training, provide on-site housing and utilities, uh, daily meals, weekly time off, and BSA and venturing rank advancement opportunities. Uh, if you have an interest or know of someone that has an interest, please have them apply today. Um, and uh, at the link at the bottom of your screen, which is www.michiganscouting.org backslash camp staff app. I'll give everyone a second to screenshot or write that down. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is Mix Fix. Um, this year we will be hosting our first annual Mix Fix. Um, Mix Fix will be on May 8, 2021. Uh, Dave Lobbs um, is our Mix Fix chairman. Um, the registration link for Mix Fix um, is right there underneath our, uh, our Mix Fix logo. Um, but what is Mix Fix? Mix Fix is an opportunity for camps, uh, uh, for uh, units and uh, community volunteers to do cleanup projects, repair projects, and building and construction projects around camp. Um, it does occur every year. Uh, last year was going to be our first annual Mix Fix. We bumped that back by a year um, and uh, hope to continue to have uh, Mix Fix each spring um, at the beginning of May. Uh, all supporters of Camp Rotary, Scouts and non-Scouts, uh, can come to Mix Fix. Uh, registered Scouters uh, have the opportunity to tent camp uh, during the event. Um, and then uh, for helping out at Mix Fix, we're going to have uh, uh, some swag items to give to you, uh, a free lunch, uh, but most importantly, uh, a big thank you uh, from myself, from the Camp Rotary team, uh, from all of our campers and from the Michigan Crossroads Council. 
So with that, um, we purposely cut the slide deck back for March um, so that we can talk about um, our COVID-19 updates um, as they pertain to this year. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is the patrol pods uh, that everyone received an email on uh, right around the third of this month. So everything that I'm going to talk about um, from here on out as it pertains to a COVID-19 update is obviously subject to change. Okay, uh, the nature of COVID-19 is ever changing. The climate is ever changing. There's new rules and regulations and recommendations, et cetera, uh, that are coming out every day. Uh, so we are doing our best to stay uh, on top of those changes, uh, to make changes to camp accordingly, uh, and then to be able to communicate those changes to you uh, in a timely process. Uh, but also making sure that we're giving you the best information in that timely process. Uh, we don't want to rush things out and then have to come back and, and reiterate again. So we're making sure that everything is correct and then getting that information out to you. Um, first, I want to say that the Michigan Crossroads Council and Camp Rotary is committed to offering a healthy and safe summer camp program. If we can stay healthy and we can stay safe, then we can have the most important type of program this summer, which is a fun program. Patrol pods um, are mandated by the state of Michigan Office of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. Okay, now the state does not call them patrol pods, the state calls them cohorts, um, but uh, stay in line with everything that the national office is doing and how we are operating here at camp. Uh, patrol pods are what we are referring uh, to cohorts as. Um, if we don't follow those LARA guidelines, uh, they can cancel our camp license. And if they cancel our camp license, then we don't get to operate camp at all. And I don't think anyone wants to not have camp for a second year in a row. So we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can uh, to stay in compliance with those mandates. Um, patrol pods, again referred to as cohorts, are also being strongly recommended for all councils by the national office. Uh, that was uh, put out last Wednesday on the National Summer Camp uh, Leaders Meeting webinar, uh, and they are utilizing the graphic that you can see on your screen. Um, there's lots of different ways to try and combat uh, COVID-19, but every single one of those ways is going to have some sort of hole in it. So if you stack up a lot of different ways uh, to uh, try and stop COVID-19, then your uh, possibility of having a transmission of the disease uh, is greatly lessened. Uh, I'm going to answer a couple questions that have popped up in the chat pertaining to COVID-19. Uh, Matt wants to know, uh, if you are to cancel camp, what would be the latest that we will be informed? Uh, that is a good question, Matt. Um, I do not have an answer for you, um, but I will ask that question um, so that we can communicate that out to you. Um, Diana, I see you're on the call. I don't know if you have any further insight on that. Um, can you hear me okay, Andrew? I can hear you okay. Great. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood the question correctly. If we have to cancel camp, was that the question? Yep. They want to know to... if we have to cancel camp, uh, what is the latest that we would let them know that camp would not be operating this summer? So I would say, um, I'm not, this is not a hundred percent definite answer, but if there was a time frame on which we did have to cancel camp, that would be after merit badge sign up. So that would be sometime in April. I would probably say uh, my best guess is that if we had to do something, hopefully not everything, you know, we, we are still planning camping on going, but if we would, it would be, um, I would say mid to late April, if anything did come out of the works. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
moving on to the next slide, um, I want to clarify the pod procedure. Okay. Uh, units are not required to build their patrol pods by age group. Um, they are encouraged to build their patrol pods by merit badge class or merit badge need. Your unit may form as many patrol pods as they need to, as long as they adhere to the no less than three and no more than 10 requirement. Uh, patrol pods are required to travel to all merit badges and activities together. Okay, so that means that um, when you put a pod of three together, that pod of three stays together all day. And you put a pod of seven together, that pod of seven stays together all day. Um, they don't split into different pods later in the day. Um, the whole purpose of the patrol pod system uh, is to uh, uh, limit the amount of people that are crossing paths throughout the day. Um, so the pod is to stay the same um, throughout the day and throughout your entire week. Um, so it will be the same group of folks traveling through camp together during your stay at camp. Um, if you have an issue where, hey, I only have two scouts that are going to be going in the PATH program, or hey, I have one scout, he only needs this one merit badge, um, you need to email those questions to me directly. I will work with my program team um, and the uh, council staff to try and accommodate those uh, as best we can while staying um, in line with the LARA guidelines. Um, for adults, you can patrol pod your adults however you wish. You can assign adults to a youth pod and they travel with that youth pod, or you can assign your adults to an adult pod and they can stay together for the week. Um, but the setup of patrol pods uh, is up to the unit. Um, if you need assistance in forming your pods or have questions regarding signups, Again, please email me directly so that I can try and assist you with that. Um, let me see if I can address a couple of these questions that are here in the chat. Um, can you change your pod uh, and join another or drop? The answer is no. Um, we understand that a lot of your scouts are going to have varying needs for merit badges. Um, again, please email me those specifics so that I can attempt to work through those with you. Um, I'm going to talk about merit badge selection in just a minute, Richard. Uh, Joel, so just remember with two deep leadership, as long as you have two youth, uh, it can be two youth and adult, uh, two youth and an adult, or two adults and one youth. Both of those meet um, all of the youth protection guidelines. Um, Michelle, we are addressing. Um, how we can accommodate drop-ins in the PATH program. Um, we don't have an answer for that yet, but we will get that out to you um, before uh, our April webinar. Uh, Melinda, yes, part-time adults are still allowed to attend camp. Um, they will go undergo a COVID screening when they uh, get to camp. Uh, Matt, we will be having some of our evening activities, not all of them. Um, there is a uh, program addendum that is going to be coming out. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but when you partake in those evening programs, you have to do so as a pod. Um, and with that, I'm going to continue to move through the presentation to try and answer some of these other questions. Um, Merit badge signup has been moved to April 1st. It will open at 8 a.m. 
Merit Badge sign-up is still going to be conducted the same way as it has been in past years. Um, units and parents are responsible for making sure that their scouts are signed up uh, for the same merit badges. Um, in the email that you received this morning, and I will also send out after the webinar this evening, um, you, we have put together a pod merit badge selection worksheet uh, to assist you with the process. Um, so here is uh, the difference for this year. This year, we have turned on the waitlist option in the online registration system. The reason we have done that is because we fully know that someone's gonna be in the computer, they're gonna have a pod of five scouts, they're gonna sign up their first three scouts, and then the class will fill up and there will not be room for the remaining two. With the waitlist feature, you will still be able to add the class to your scout's schedule, um, even if the class has filled up. That does not guarantee that your pod is in that class. After Merit Badge signup has taken place on April 1st, we are going to shut off the Merit Badge signup system um, from April 3rd through April 7th. That will allow us to go in and look at the wait lists, which are time stamped, and we will review what we can accommodate in the way of increasing class capacities while maintaining social distancing in the physical program area. We may reach out to you during that time um, if there's just too big of an issue and ask for a second or third merit badge choice so that we can accommodate your scouts the best way that we can. I know that this is not ideal. I know that it can be frustrating. These are the cards that we've been dealt by the state of Michigan and we're doing the best that we can to accommodate our campers while maintaining um, compliance with state guidelines and yet still be able to have camp. On April 7th, after we've been in touch with you uh, or made changes to class sizes, we will communicate with you a confirmation of what merit badge classes all of your scouts um, are signed up for, okay? I'm gonna move on to talk about food service. Uh, food service, uh, we have a plan that we have submitted to the Risk Management Committee for approval. Um, so I cannot go through the full plan until it has been approved. What I can tell you is what is currently on your screen. Uh, food is going to be delivered to your campsites. You will not need to cook your food. We are not turning Camp Rotary into a patrol cooking camp. Uh, we will prepare all of your food, um, which will be placed in hot bags or in uh, coolers as appropriate. And we will deliver that to your campsite um, within 15 minutes of the start of the meal time. We are going to provide dish soap, sanitizer tablets, thermometers, sponges, paper towels, uh, meal delivery and pickup, and daily trash pickup for you. Units are going to need to bring dining flies uh, or other shelters to eat underneath, mess kits or place settings um, for each camper, and wash, rinse, and sanitize basins. Those are the things that you can start planning for now we will put out a food service addendum to the leader's guide uh, within the next month um, so that everyone can see the full uh, food service process. Um, we're going to do the best that we can for making sure that there is enough seating in your campsites. There are a limited number of picnic tables in camp. Um, so we're going to try and distribute those uh, as best we can. 
One of the things that we are going to strongly, strongly, strongly advise as we move closer into April um, is everyone bringing uh, a chair with them to camp um, that is not heavy, is easily portable, um, because that will assist in making more space, not only in your campsites, um, but in our program areas uh, to help in accommodating uh, social distancing um, um, out in camp. The last thing I want to touch briefly on is our refund policy. Uh, the current MCC refund policy is that any summer camp slots that are dropped from your registra registration between now and May 31st are subject to a 15% cancellation fee of the entire camp fee. That's $49.50 uh, for youth and $24 for adults. Um, no refunds are given for any slots that are dropped after May 31st and the total camp fee is still due for that slot after that date. Um, refunds are given for medical reasons or extenuating circumstances, um, but they are still subject to the 15% cancellation fee. Um, and full refunds are only given if the council cancels the event. That has been our refund policy for as long as I can remember. Um, we are reviewing this policy um, as it pertains to COVID-19. Um, and we will let you know uh, as soon as uh, we have some information. We're now gonna go into the question and answer period. Uh, I'm sure that there are uh, a lot of questions that are out there. I'm gonna scroll back up through the chat and answer some of these. I am not going to be able to answer every question that is here. Um, so again, if I don't uh, answer your question, please reach out to me via an email uh, and, and I will do my best to answer those for you. A um, couple questions uh, people have asked about uh, uh, early arrivals. Um, are we going to be accommodating early arrivals this year? Uh, the answer is no. Um, with COVID and the state guidelines, uh, we are not able to accommodate early arrivals this year. We are looking at a different process for check-in. Um, once that check-in process has been um, vetted and signed off by our risk management committee, um, we will uh, um, communicate that with you. A um, couple questions about counselors and training or C, excuse me, CITs. Um, will we have them this year? The answer is yes. They can fill out an application on the same application site as our camp staff. Um, and they will also have a process that they will need to go through um, for uh, quarantining before they come to camp, um, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, screening themselves before they come to camp, et cetera. Um, but uh, we will still have the counselor in training program. Joel asked about mile swim and the patrol pod. Um, the answer uh, is kind of. Uh, when we, you do the mile swim, you have to have a rower and a spotter. Um, so you're going to use members uh, from the mile or from your pod. Uh, to be your rower and your spotter for the mile swim. Um, we talked about pods. Any pod questions that you have that I have not talked about this evening, um, please reach out to me via email. Uh, path scouts was a question. How are we handling path scouts? Um, path scouts still or path still has to attend as a pod. If you have a smaller number of path scouts, i.e. two, um, we can get them into a pod. 
Um, if you only have a Path Scout, um, remember that all Path Scouts um, that come to camp or that utilize the Path program are required to have an adult in attendance as well. Um, so you will make that adult um, uh, part of the pod. You will need to have a second adult um, that walks with them to the class um, for two deep leadership uh, purposes, um, or they can walk uh, um, within sight of another pod from your unit that's going by the same location. Um, the PATH program, um, this is going to be coming out in the program addendum tomorrow, uh, will not be held at the regular PATH area this year. Uh, the area is simply too small to accommodate um, the amount of scouts that typically take part in the PATH program. Uh, so the PATH program will be moving uh, to the barbecue pit area uh, and training field behind the dining hall. Um, let's see, we talked about the wait lists. Um, we talked about uh, how we're handling dining. Um, Melinda asks, can a parent and child share a tent at camp uh, or can siblings share a tent at camp? The answer is yes, they can, um, if, as long as they are from the same household. So as long as they're from the same household, they can share a tent while at camp. Um, otherwise, it is one person per tent. Uh, let's see, we talked about picnic tables. Um, if you have a um, boy troop and a girl troop that are coming to camp together um, that are sharing leadership, um, which happens quite a bit, um, the question is, uh, will the adults be allowed to visit each other in the campsite? The answer is yes. When you're in your campsites, um, you know, you're, you're still a, a family unit as a troop. Um, you want to try and, and maintain to those pods um, while you're in your, your campsites. Um, but you're sharing leadership, so we understand that, um, and uh, um, you should you, you'll be able to do that with no issues. Uh, Michael asks, uh, "Who is providing hot water? We're going to provide you with the water that you need." Um, one of the things that's being vetted through right now is that um, you will need to bring a way to heat that water in your campsite. Um, that is why we are providing you with a thermometer and sanitizing tablets. Um, there's some more questions about transporting scouts. There's some more questions about refunds. Those are going to be addressed um, in the coming weeks. Um, will a pod or cohort be allowed to visit the trading post, go fishing, open swim, et cetera? The answer is yes. Um, everything will be done uh, as a patrol pod. Um, so if the pod wants to go to the trading post, they go to the trading post. Uh, if they want to go fishing, they go fishing. If they want to swim, they go to open swim together. Um, that, that type of stuff will still occur uh, at camp. Um, adults in pods will not take space from scouts and merit badge classes. Um, some questions on swim tests. Um, like I stated back in January and in February, we are strongly, strongly, strongly encouraging pre-camp swim checks. Um, if you cannot get a swim check in uh, before the start of camp, um, that's okay. You will still have the ability to do them here at camp. Just know that that process is going to take uh, a little bit longer than usual um, so that we can make sure we're following uh, state mandates as they pertain uh, to COVID-19. Joe is asking, how do we identify pods when signing up for merit badges? I assume you will need this info for your fine tuning. Um, 
that's going to come straight from the timestamp, uh, Joe. When you're putting your scouts in the system, uh, sign up the scouts um, in each pod. So if I have Billy, Joe, and Tommy in one pod, I'm going to sign up Billy, Joe, and Tommy first. Then I'm going to move on to my next pod. That way they'll be time stamped when they go into the system. Uh, but we will be reaching out to people via email uh, and phone uh, to try and take care of those issues. Um, we know that there's going to be some that arise. We also recognize that it's Easter weekend. Um, so we'll be uh, um, uh, making sure that we take that into consideration as well. Uh, Glenn asked, what is considered early arrival? Early arrival is considered any time before registration opens, um, which in the past has been uh, 1230. Um, we are currently looking at a staggered assigned arrival time. Um, but again, that is still being vetted through our risk management committee. We will have more details on that as we move forward uh, into April. Uh, Joel wants to know from some parents, does every merit badge slot need to be filled? The answer is no. Um, if, you're, if you have a pod of scouts that wants a break from the 10 to 11 merit badge period, they just don't sign up for a merit badge from the 10 to 11 period. We're asking that when they are not in uh, merit badge classes, um, that they uh, stay in the campsite or they go shore fishing together, uh, something where they are not just wandering through camp um, they can be working on service projects, et cetera. Um, uh, second question he has is, will the range be open um, for practice shooting? Open shooting will still occur at the scheduled times. Just remember you have to travel two areas by pods. Um, and then you have three path scouts, but only one parent can go. Is that okay? The answer is yes. Um, we just ask that one adult be in attendance if you are having any uh, scouts take part in the PATH program. David White wants to know, will scouts be able to go to the waterfront? Uh, the answer is yes, we will have open swim. Um, they have to do so by pod. There will be some different requirements um, from the national office on how swim checks and et cetera will be conducted, um, but they, uh, they will be able uh, to go to the waterfront. Doug asks, do you need three attendees for the mile swim? The answer is yes. It has always been that way. Uh, you have a swimmer, a rower, and a spotter. Um, so you will always have three folks for the mile swim program. Um, uh, merit badge sign up, uh, is it being done by pod or on an individual basis? Uh, it will be on individual basis. The registration system is not set up to accommodate for everyone to be put into a pod and then sign the whole pod up um, because this is something that is new. Um, so uh, again, with that worksheet that we handed out, make sure you're filling those out. It will make your process for signing scouts up for merit badges go uh, a lot more smoothly. Um, Let's see. Uh, Tom Hoblet, if, ship, if siblings are sharing a tent, do they need to be in the same pod? Um, the answer is no, they do not need to be in the same pod. However, the only time that they'll interact with each other is when they're in their tent. Um, t -t 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 At this time, camp does not uh, provide any propane. Um, Shannon wants to know if this is being recorded. It is being recorded. Uh, Chris Hopkins is our uh, chief information officer. Typically, he'll have this uh, recording posted um, within a couple of days uh, on the michiganscouting.org website um, for you to view anything that you may have missed. Uh, Glenn wants to know what my favorite color is. If you're asking for a regular favorite color, it's green. If you're asking for the off-the-wall favorite color, it's charcoal gray. Um, 
We provide uh, tons and tons and tons of downed wood in your campsites for you, uh, Doug, and uh, we encourage you to burn uh, all the wood that you can find in the woods around your campsite. Uh, that helps in cleaning up the woods and follows the rules of leave no trace. Um, Steve wants to know if the merit badge schedule um, and offerings have changed. The schedule uh, has not changed. Um, only two merit badges have changed. Um, we are not offering cooking this year um, because of the uh, uh, food prep um, component. That food prep component mixed with COVID-19 is not a friendly mixture. Um, that is being replaced with geocaching. And then uh, salesmanship, uh, typically you have to handle merchandise and interact with other folks. So because of that, we have changed that merit badge to entrepreneurship. Some of our merit badge cap uh, capacities have decreased. Um, in order to uh, maintain social distancing in the area that is provided. Um, we are looking at other ways to expand our air, some of our program areas through uh, the use, excuse me, of pop-up tents, uh, canopies, um, or uh, like we did in the way of the PATH program, moving the program to a different area. Um, I will be putting out a program addendum to everyone tomorrow. Um, I'm working on finishing up the last little bits of that. Um, I told everyone I would have it to them by Friday. Uh, you will have it tomorrow. Um, that will have all of the updated merit badge um, and non-merit badge program information in it. Um, lots of people are asking about how to get pre-camp swim checks done and contacts. Um, Corey, I'm going to see if you can get Jay Richardson's information in the chat for everyone. Uh, if not, um, I will uh, make sure that I include that in the uh, follow-up email that will go out after the conclusion of tonight's webinar. Um, uh, Joel, correct, there will not be any cooking this year. Uh, Rich would like the link to the uh, uh, registration landing page. Um, I will include that in the follow-up email as well. Uh, Mary wants to know how to get added to the email list. Mary, send me an email and I can work with you to make that happen. Um, Bill, unfortunately, we will not have a salad bar this year. Um, we will have a... Uh, a uh, salad option served with a couple of our dinners during the week. Uh, we are in the process of adjusting our menus accordingly. A uh, question about meals um, with special dietary needs. Um, there is a special dietary need form that is part of the registration process. Um, you'll make, need to make sure that that is filled out and turned in ahead of time. Um, there's also a spot that you're required to fill in any dietary needs that you have on your registration. 
Uh, those special dietary meals will be prepared separate in our kitchen like they always have been, uh, will be packaged separately and delivered to your campsites. Uh, all pre-camp swim checks uh, are required to be pre-approved by the MCC Aquatics Committee prior to those happening. Um, so uh, again, I will provide Jay Richardson's information um, in my follow-up email uh, to this webinar. And um, you, uh, your unit can reach out to Jay uh, to get approval to do pre-camp swim checks. All right. Uh, Sean, do I see that you're on the line, man? I am on, Andrew. Hey, uh, there's a couple more questions coming in the chat, but since you're on, is there anything you'd like to add based off of what we talked about tonight? I know that there's still a lot of questions coming in about pods and how they're going to work, and I'm going to ask that uh, if we have not answered your question um, pertaining to pods in the campsite that you email me, um, and I will uh, uh, get back to you on those. I'm going to put my email in the chat. But, Sean, anything you want to add um, that was covered this evening? Yeah, I would just like to say that uh, we th – thanks for uh, being patient with us. Uh, I think, you know, what we're doing is a little different, but I really think the experience will be the same at summer camp. You know, our scouts will be in patrols. And, you know, we'll have to have some flexibility with uh, merit badges. Uh, you know, we hope that there's a common ground for scouts to be able to take those merit badges. Um, we've instructed our camp directors, I know Andrew is on top of it, and our other camp directors at other camps to do everything that we can to get uh, those pods into the class that they want. You know, instead of one scout on the waiting list, it may be two or three. Um, we've looked at all our areas and determined capacity. And uh, every scout that we can accommodate, um, we will. You know, we looked at the space and we uh, know that we have to social distance and be in pods. So, uh, um, you know, during that time when registration closes the first time, our camp directors are going to work like heck to uh, accommodate those pods and get back with UASAP so that you can complete the registration process. Um, um, but we feel within the environment that we're in and what other camps are doing, um, uh, we are gonna have a very, very strong program. Um, as Andrew mentioned, th these are state of Michigan guidelines that we're following as well as national ESA. And, um, and uh, yes, uh, those are guidelines we have to follow, but we're also doing, doing this to, uh, to be safe in our program. Um, we've already had a, a few schools that have opened, high schools. Um, one local high school here had a, um, about 500 students or so stay at home um, because they had an outbreak at a basketball game. Um, it is still, uh, we still have to be very careful. Um, the number one way for COVID to start, as we learn about these camps from last summer and this year, is by mixing groups. So, uh, you know, we feel very comfortable that we'll have an incredible program that'll look a little bit different. Uh, back to you, Andrew. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Um, quite honestly, I expected more questions to come through the chat. Um, you know, Doug, you couldn't have had better timing with the question that you just threw in there. And that is, uh, what will happen if, we, uh, loose, uh, if the state loosens restrictions? And the answer is, uh, we're going to move through this process um, with the guidance and the regulations that we are given that we have to comply with. Um, if, if regulations change to where camp can be a little more fluid, obviously we're going to look at that and we'll adjust accordingly. Uh, like we said back in December when we started the pre-camp webinar series, uh, when we put out all of our leaders' guides, things are going to continue to change just as the climate of COVID-19 is going to change. And things could change literally up until the week before you come to camp. We are doing everything that we can uh, with the information that we are given. And as things change, and we know that they will change, uh, we will adjust um, as necessary. 
and communicate that with you uh, uh, in as timely of a manner as we can while making sure that both you and we have all of the pertinent information. And uh, Andrew, just to follow up on that, right now in the state, we're at a, a level four um, in, uh, you know, our level four condition four, whatever you want to call it. Um, the next level is five, which is getting out of the um, COVID situation we're in. And those requirements are, are, are the same in regards to uh, um, uh, what we would have to do in pod. So I do not anticipate us um, be changing that um, before summer camp, or at least we can't for planning purposes. If it does, we, you know, if it does, it becomes less restrictive and we um, are able to do more things. We obviously will lift those as much as possible. And I see some good questions. Um, we will be putting out a, another webinar in regards to just more details on the requirements. Um, the state of Michigan does say groups are 10 or less. I even asked our rep, well, 10 or less, isn't one less than 10? And we kind of came, came to an agreement that we could do um, approximately three and up in our pod. So, um, there is, if you look at the guidelines, there's things that contradict themselves and, and uh, uh, different throughout the state. But overall, we, do, we are doing everything we can just to be safe. If we have one case at summer camp, say it's week one or two, and we're mixing all over the place, and we cannot determine where those scouts were, we, we have to close camp. And not just for that week, but probably for the rest of the summer. So that definitely is... Uh, one of the things that we're trying to avoid over just the fact of being safe. Um, but uh, um, got a lot of good information that Andrew gave you today, um, and we will have more to come. As I met, mentioned, um, our camp directors are going to do everything we can to accommodate your scout group. True. I just want to add a couple of things as I've talked to leaders. Um, I saw in the chat earlier, uh, Jen from Troop 77 said, hey, we did a Google Doc. And we asked our youth to, sorry, my dog is breaking things. We asked our youth to, to opt for their top merit badges and then we sorted them. Um, I've heard a lot of troops say that they're, they're starting out that way and sorting them by uh, giving priority to merit badges that you can really only do easily at camp and then putting off those other ones that you can do the rest of the year. Um, if you find there are themes in that, that you're putting off the citizenship merit badges because you can know you can do that later in the year, Keep talking to us because just because uh, your scouts can't take them at summer camp doesn't mean we can't help um, host them later on in the year. We can do weekend merit badges at camp. We can put on virtual merit badges again. We stopped that for a little while because we found when scouts went back to school, they did not want to do virtual merit badges anymore. And we, were, we found ourselves canceling them, but we can do another round of those if there are very specific needs um, later on. I talked to one scoutmaster who said, you know, we, uh, we're making this an escape room. So we're going to hold a, a troop meeting and give them the challenge. The puzzle for you guys to figure out is how are we uh, safely going to attend camp this year and follow these rules. And they really just made it a challenge for the scouts to work together and, and find the best way to do it. Um, so, so we know it's not ideal, but um, remember that this year we have double in some ways, right? Double the amount of first year scouts because of all those scouts last year who didn't get a first year at summer camp. Um, so even though this is new and a shift for all of us, a lot of your younger scouts, this is just what, what camp is like for them. This is uh, nothing out of the ordinary for them because it's the first time they get to go. Um, so, so we are doing what we can uh, to make this experience um, easy. I know it's not that easy, but as compared to the past, uh, but we're doing what we can to make it easy and definitely safe for everyone. And those new scouts aren't going to know any different because this is their first experience. Um, so again, if you have those specific needs that can wait till after camp, just keep communicating with us. We'll, we'll figure out how to get some of those things going statewide. Awesome. It'd be nice to know more about the escape room activity. <laughs> Well, the Scoutmaster, what he was doing is making it like an escape room challenge. If you've ever been to one of those where you have to figure out all of these clues to get out of the room. And theirs was just to get, 
to get out of the troop meeting. <laughs> you guys have to figure out how to piece together this puzzle of the merit badge schedule. But they made it fun. Um, another scoutmaster told me, well, I'm telling them all, a pod, it's just like being an astronaut where you eat with these people, you go to the bathroom at the same time as these people, and you're orbiting camp together. So they were just finding kind of positive spins on it um, so, so that the scouts could understand what was happening. But um, if you come up with a unique way to do it, I see some other people are saying, hey, we did a Google survey as well, and you want to share it with everyone else, just email Andrew and he'll include it uh, in his communications to leaders. But if you have a best practice, we would love to hear it and share it. Awesome. Thank you, Corey. Um, we've got our commissioner, Rick Kimmel, on. Rick, anything you want to talk about while you're on the call? Oh, just um, we will be uh, changing up the uh, participation requirements for the award of excellence to uh, go along with some of the changes that uh, you're seeing at camp, so we're still working on that. But uh, again, I'm sorry, I won't give those to you until you get to camp and go to that leaders meeting. So, but uh, we will have them, and we will still have fun with that whole situation. That's awesome. about it, Andrew. All right, thanks, Rick. And uh, our program director, Ken, is also on the call. Ken, anything uh, you have to touch on this evening? No, I think I've been getting a lot of questions about the PATH program. It is not mandatory for your scouts to attend that program. It's just, if you have a second or third year scout that would benefit from what's going on there, they're more than welcome to attend that program, but it is not a mandatory program for a first year scout to attend. They can go and take merit badges along with the other scouts in your troop. That's all I had, Andrew. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Ken and Rick, for being on the call. Corey, uh, Sean, and Diana, and letting me put you all on the spot. Um, I uh, um, honestly expected uh, there to be a lot more questions, so I'm glad that uh, um, we were able to get through this. Um, with that, uh, I will send out a, uh, a recap of tonight's meeting along with some of the links um, that uh, um, we uh, talked about in tonight's meeting. Um, our next uh, webinar is scheduled for Wednesday, April 21st uh, from 7.30 uh, until 9 o'clock um, at the link that's there on your screen. Uh, I will give uh, everyone uh, a chance to write that down or take a screenshot. Um, you will not want to miss this webinar. Uh, this webinar is going to have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, um, information regarding camp operations. How uh, much was that? Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, I think is Just, what I I think that's the right infinity amount. Infinity and beyond a lot. Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, but please know that we are working um, diligently. Uh, we're putting in a lot of time and hours I know Ken and I have spent uh, two Saturdays that have lasted about nine hours each uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, and then Ken and Rick and I meet, uh, um, we're starting uh, twice a month now uh, for our, our key three meetings. Um, but uh, in addition to those key three meetings, um, as things arise, we are in contact with each other to make sure that the camp experience that you have this summer is not only safe and healthy, um, but is fun as well. Um, so thank you everyone for your time this evening. Uh, again, this uh, webinar will be posted. Uh, give Chris a couple days to, to get it formatted correctly so it, it shows up on the website. Um, and I will be sending out a follow-up email uh, of tonight's presentation. Thank you everyone and have a great evening.